Hi there, good evening. Welcome to the Jimbo Hannon Show from Westwood One Radio. We're at 1-866-50-JIMBO, 1-866-505-4626. And on the web, we're at jimbotalk.net. We welcome back a repeat guest and always a very welcome and articulate part of this program, Bob Green, the noted journalist, newspaper reporter, and columnist, and now author. He has uh, written the book Late Edition from St. Martin's Press. That indeed. Bob, thank you for coming on. Oh, Jim, it's great to talk with you again. Thanks so much. I very news about newspapers, but at that point, it was the, the center, the core of the community. If you worked in a newspaper city room, and so that became my life that summer. Now it, it consisted of cleaning out paste pots and running to get coffee and, and, and egg, fried egg sandwiches for the reporters, picking up cigarettes for the city editor. But I was part of it. I saw it being put together. And you realize that there are young people out there right now uh, who may have an interest in, in pursuing a career in communication media of some sort who don't have a clue as to why Bob Green had to mess with paste pots. <laughs> On every desk, there was an old coffee cup, an old coffee mug, and in those coffee mugs was the thickest, gooeyest, low-grade, cheap white paste. Uh, a brush, you know, black bristles jammed into it because, you know, the fr for those young people who are listening, you know the phrase cut and paste on your computer where you uh -huh. copy and paste things together? Well, that phrase comes from somewhere. That's how reporters rearrange their stories. If they wanted the fifth paragraph to go up where the second paragraph was, they would take a scissors, cut them apart on the copy paper, and they would use this thick, gunky paste to put the stories together. So all day long, you know, men were typing and pasting, typing and pasting. And every day I would have to take the paste pots back to the men's room. So as the, as the reporters were using the facilities, I was at the sink running this hot water into these paste, into these uh, uh, mugs to get the old paste in and put the new paste, old paste out and put the new paste in. And yet it seemed to me, you know, I was helping get a newspaper out. I was, without the paste I was putting in these mugs, they couldn't put their stories together. These are the same young people who needed that explanation who also on occasion have come across strange, messy black sheets in their grand is this. Many, there may be some newspapers that will survive in name on the internet with maybe one-fifth of the resources they had, which means they'll be able to cover City Hall, they'll go to news conferences, and they'll go to fires. But who is going to have the resources to put aside some really crack reporter to simply say, smell out some corruption? We may not publish anything from you for a couple of months, but when we do, it's going to be a Pulitzer Prize winner. And, uh, frankly, if I were young and ambitious and totally lacking in ethics and morals, I would be very happy about this era because I don't think anybody's going to catch my shenanigans. This is the era for corruption and demagoguery. Well, and on a more personal level, in Detroit,